sports bar. But there's not one TV. A sports bar with no TV? How does that even work? Are they gonna listen to the games on radio? What's up guys, it's your boy Alan again, back with another video. And today, we're gonna watch another episode of Bar Rescue. But before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, let's go check this out. Of disaster. Well, here we are. Long Shots Sports Bar and Grill. It's dead. Dude, look at that sign. The colors are so bright, it drowns out the text that says Sports Bar and Grill. I mean, look at that. No one can see it. All it says is Long Shots. It's dead. Looks like a long shot to me. Definitely. You don't look pretty to me. So. What the f I look pretty to everybody, okay? Are those picnic tables? If you want to have a proper sports bar, at least have proper tables and chairs. In addition to the cameras that have been following the long shot staff, surveillance cameras have been placed around the bar for John and Elaine to observe from the SUV. You know what's interesting about Wow, they are super close to the entrance. About sports bars. In my 30 years of doing this, whenever a rookie doesn't know what to do, does a sports bar. Somehow they think you put the word sports up there and sports is gonna fill you 300. That's so funny. Not only that, yes, sports bars sometimes get a huge crowd when there's sports games on, but if there's nothing, then the bars are usually super empty. Like, I know places that will get so slammed when there are sports, but when something's not happening, those places are also really dead because there's no other reason to go to that place. If you want your bar to succeed, it can't depend on just one aspect of that bar. Like, a lot of sports bars depend too much on sports, so when there's nothing on, it becomes super slow. Like, you need something that locals will go to even when there's no games on. 65 days a year. The most you ever get out of sports is 70 days. Look at this place. It's so big. There's no intimacy in it. It's so big. There's not a lot of chairs. They should have thought of putting more communal tables. So when there are games, you can have like, large groups of like 7 to like 20 people. But right now, it's just individual like picnic tables, which probably holds about six. Lots of these uh, circular tables, which looks like they only hold four people. And they're all spread apart. So when you're watching sports, you want to be able to like talk to the neighboring tables about what's going on. Friendly banter, trash talking, like things like that. Sports bar, but there's not one TV. A sports bar with no TV? How does that even work? Are they going to listen to the games on radio? This is Mark. He looks defeated. The guy's in a hole 450. <sighs> wow, he looks like he's gonna pass out. <laughs> is it really that slow right now that you're gonna fall asleep in front of your customers? $50,000. Wow. He's losing $5,000 a month, and here's the kicker. This $5,000 a month? How do these inexperienced people get these bars in the first place? They should have talked to like an accountant or somebody to look at, okay, how are you gonna make money? Because like a lot of these episodes where they have these rookie bar owners, they're losing thousands a month, which is like insane. What motivated them to get into the bar business anyways? This guy is two weeks from losing his house. Two weeks from losing his house. Is this even enough time to rescue this place? Like, because we have to worry about the bar, but these changes are not going to be fast enough to, you know, is he going to make enough money to be able to afford his next mortgage? All right, there's that. Hey, what's going on? Girlfriend, assistant. Oh my God, why? Why do these bar owners like to hire the friends, family, or partners into this. It's like, it's never worked. Like maybe a few times it has worked, but in many cases, the parties involved have experience. Like they said that he doesn't have any experience. So I assume that his girlfriend's probably not gonna have experience as well. I've seen it happen before in real life as well, not only just in this show, but it never works out. You need to hire people who have experience and the relationship between you two should not be a factor in hiring people. There's Jesse, he's a bartender. You want another beer? And that's Keller. She's another bartender. That's my section, so you should sit there. And then that's my section, so you should sit there. You can't. It should be the host, if they have one, that tells people where to sit. If there isn't, then the guest should be able to sit anywhere. The servers should not be telling the guests you should sit over there because that's my table. It's super unprofessional. This bar is incredibly unprofessional. Wait, 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 wait. Are these employees arguing with each other? What's going on? They look like drunk guests. Oh, Why are you crying? I'm fine. I'm fine. No, I'm fine. Okay, okay, I'm fine. Shut the f up and eat it, bitch. Get the mouth. 
Dude, this is a hostile work environment. How is this going on in broad daylight? On this girl. Wow. I hope you're happy, Jesse. Jesse, I hope you're happy. I can't believe she's still. Dude, this is like not what you expect from an employee. This is what you expect out of drunk guests that you have to kick out. And it looks like they're kicking her out right now at her own workplace. This guy allows his staff to create a level of personal drama that is causing him to lose his house. All right, how's everybody doing? Dude, can you imagine seeing employees act like drunk idiots? Who would want to go back? You're trying to enjoy a drink with your friends, listen to some sports games on the radio, you know, and you just want to just chill with your friend and have a good time. And now you see the employees engaging in their own personal drama right in front of you when they should be taking care of your drinks and food. And I... Who is that guy? Is that a preacher? I am a... Yeah, why are there chairs like that? A hypnotist, a stage hypnotist. Oh. A stage hypnotist. I have never seen a hypnotist at a bar. Like, I've seen magicians in weddings and Vegas shows, but not at a sports bar. If you'd like to experience hypnosis, if you'd like to be part of tonight's show, come on, make your way on up here. That's not something you do in a bar. I want do you know how much time that this little routine takes? And all those customers who are participating, they're not drinking. It also doesn't look like anyone else is paying attention. You see, the way hypnosis works is your mind and your body does not know the difference between what is real or vividly imagined. That's Sleep. <sighs> they're literally watching people fall asleep at the bar. Does that seem like a good high energy time? Sports bar. Good luck. John enters Long Shots, a 7,000 square foot venue featuring two bars housing four speed wells. This is a very, very bad setup. Like you have two bars. I'm assuming one is a primary, one is a satellite, but they're right next to each other's. This is going to create a lot of confusion. Guests are not going to know where to sit. And the four bartenders in such a small area, how is the productivity going to be like? Like we've seen this happen before when you have two bars that are right next to each other's. Like guests are just confused where to sit. Like are these two separate bars able to produce the same drinks? Or is one more beer focused and one more, you know, spirits and cocktails focused? If I were to design this place, I would have maybe the larger uh, bar have two bartenders and a bar in the corner just have one bartender and that bartender only focuses on service. That is making drinks for the restaurant and there would be no seats at that bar. So it will be a service well only. A catwalk surrounded by a chain link fence and a stage where the hypnotist continues his show. So is the hypnotist like a regular act? That stage could be better used for things like karaoke or quiz nights or something like that. Especially with a sports theme, you could definitely use like a sports theme like trivia night. Also the fact that you have to go to the stage to go to the catwalk, like what's the purpose? Yeah, this whole layout doesn't make any sense. John Taffer is the rock star for bar owners and he just walked into the bar. He's just a smart guy and he's gonna save long shots. Do me a favor, kill this show and say goodnight, okay? Oh! <laughs> Straight to work. Three, taking another deep, deep breath in. Two, feeling that energy down in your feet, all the way up into your legs, into your body. I mean, look at this. You have, like, as I was saying earlier, you have these two separate bars, but both of them right now are super slow. There's no need to have two bars unless you are extremely busy all the time. And once again, if that was the case, one of those bars should just be dedicated as a service a well, just to serve drinks for the dining room guests. But right now, they're just super slow and way overstaffed. So who's the customer's favorite employee in the building? Oh, everybody loves Keller. They all love Keller, huh? Yeah. Hi, Keller. Hi. I'm John. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, a lot of love. She's totally being flagged down by customers right now. I'm told you're the most popular person in the bar. Is that true? Maybe the most talked about, but maybe not always a good thing. That doesn't sound like a good thing. The fact that she's the most talked about bartender and there's no guests around her, that's probably not a good sign. So, what is your relationship with Jesse? Oh, bad. I hate Jesse. He's a total douchebag. I dated him, so I can say that. Oh my god, so you have two pairs of people who have dated in this bar. One is still dating and one broke up. Can you imagine all that drama? So right now you have to deal with a couple and a former couple. I dated Keller for a few months and we really don't get along. We try not to be anywhere near each other. How many people have... <sighs> Why do people do this? Well, like everyone should know that you shouldn't be dating your coworkers. It never ends well. I've slept with Jesse. 
Taylor and Jesse. They're Oh my God, so they're... So he's dating the other bartender. This has happened before in Bar Rescue and that was not good neither. Why is this happening? Why do people choose to work in these types of environments? So Mark knows that they're sleeping together and this is going on. Oh yeah. Keller So the manager knows all about all this and is not doing anything about it. Like, and he's surprised that he's losing money. Of course, he himself is dating one of the managers, so he's probably completely clueless on how this industry works. Like what should be done and what should not be done. Me and Jesse, as soon as I started working here, we're really good friends, and maybe that's part of it. What do your friends say when you tell them that you're working here? It's embarrassing. <sighs> Why are you here if you don't like your job and you don't like your coworkers? He doesn't want to do it. So cut him off. He doesn't think he can be safe. I have no idea what my crew said to John to get him to leave. Wow. So he has, I mean, he already knew there was some drama going on. Like, what did he expect? Of course they're gonna be transparent to John. So whatever he thinks they said that upset John, he shouldn't be surprised about that. He really thinks you're gone. If he thought that I left, and this was so important to him, wouldn't he chase me? Yeah. I don't know what to do. I'll never be able to pay it off. Uh, I, uh, I kind of feel bad for him. Like he's never done this before, so granted, yeah, I can see why he doesn't know what to do when coworkers are dating and stuff. But he himself is dating another employee too, so he's also stirring the pot. If John doesn't show up, I lose everything. I have to know what my crew said to him to make him leave. I can't believe you got to get this opportunity for him just so you can run your mouth. Mark, you can't I well when I lie. I know what. No. A liar when I see one. Are you kidding? I'm the liar now. He's right. This is fire Keller because he thinks it's all earned. Oh. So, did one of the employees lie about the relationships? What's going on? Was she trying to sabotage this whole rescue? But once again, like, who knows what the truth is? For all we know, everyone's lying. I've never slept with her. You're a oh, liar. Don't call me a liar. I believe him. You believe him? I believe yeah. him both. Because they're. Wow, what's going on here? This is like some high school drama. Who gives a f they f if they did? When we dated, yeah, you were the one that wanted to f lie to everybody and tell them we weren't sleeping together. I did it! I did it! I'm not fing sad right now. Jeez, man. That is not. See, this is what happens when you have all these personal problems and you intermingle everything. Like, this is not how a manager or owner should be dealing with this kind of drama. Like, it should not be getting this emotional. You're calling me a lot. I don't want to talk to you, you anymore. You know he's f everybody on your side. It's staff. over. Listen to me. Let's grow up. What? Stop it, Keller. I need this. See, this is wrong. Whoever is wrong or right, she wasn't trying to sabotage him. That's, I don't think so. But regardless on who's telling the truth or who's lying, you cannot be talking to your employees like that. You cannot do it anymore. You're bringing too much drama in this place. I am here to help you. No, I'm the so he's convinced she said something to me that made oh, me Oh, yeah, leave? absolutely. Of the three of us. This is nuts. He, at this point, like, if I were John, I'd be like, I know that this was supposed to be just to test out what's going on, but you see the owners treating the employees like this. Is is this worth rescuing? This happens all the time. Some kind of drama. He's yelling at someone. It's never his fault. I'm a liar. Am I a liar? Am I a liar? If one word that comes out of your mouth is it about Oh, he interjects the friggin' interview. <laughs> I don't think I've seen that before. That bitch is toxic. Personal dynamics with this team and their behavior is incredibly unprofessional. It's disorganized chaos. Tomorrow, I'm gonna sit with the staff. Yeah, this is pretty bad. Even, it, it, okay, it doesn't matter who's telling the truth or who's not. The fact is, none of these people are able to work with each other. So, you have to make a choice. Like, get rid of them, get rid of all of them. But, th you can't keep all three of them. Like, this is not gonna work out. This happening every night. Is that gonna do your business any good? I mean, you're gonna have to make some tough calls here. About as low energy and as uncool as it could possibly be, and the sign in front says sports bar. So, I'm confused. I wanna know what's wrong about this place. Well, first of all, it's not a sports bar. You can't have a sports bar without a TV. What do you think the biggest problem is here? Definitely promotions and consistency. So based upon Mark's marketing background, he could do promotions to fill this place, couldn't he? Oh. He has a marketing background? Why is he labeling this as a sports bar and not have any TV? Like, what? I don't understand. Like, what? How is this a sports bar? That's a big question here. I don't feel my operations are sound enough to, to waste the time or uh, energy to get them in here. So you don't have the confidence to market it and promote it. But yet over the past year, you've done nothing to change that. 
Yeah, but you're also inviting hypnotists? How is that promoting your place? Who would go to a bar just to see a hypnotist? You, I had two employees that wanted to kill each other. And all I had to do is take control of the situation. I just fixed one of the biggest problems in this building. Yeah, like he knew that this was happening. Rather than fix it, he just yelled at everyone. Why is all the booze in here? I mean, I could understand why you'd keep some vodka cold, but why would you keep this cold? This will sweat when you put it on the bar and stuff. It just... This is the walk-in? Why would you put whiskey in the walk-in like that? What a waste of space. Does that sound like good controls to you? No. Look at the drips going down the front of this door. You know what makes that color? Bacteria, is that cleaning? It's not clean. It's wet water plus beer has proteins and sugar. That's not just some bacteria. You can see like the darker areas. Those are like possibly mold, maybe different types of bacteria that are just growing on top of each other's. Lane, what do we have for liquor bottles? There's sludge actually in there. Oh, oh they've never cleaned the wells. You should clean the speed rails at the end of every shift. You also need to make sure that they're dry before you put the bottles back on. Look at the bar under here, guys, and you can't even see it from there. They don't mop the bottoms. Oh, man. You know what that is? Feces. Probably from mice. Oh, at first I thought it was a rust. I said, oof, geez, that's not good. Oh, man. Rodent feces. And it gets freaking worse. Here are all your ashtrays. Not one of these is clean. You can't even wipe down a they're just stacking used ashtrays on top of one another behind the bar right next to the straws oh my god i understand that some stuff on the floor you might miss but this is what they're doing they're picking up the ashtrays from the tables stacking them on top of each other's and putting it next to straws. This is a result of their own actions. So it's not by accident. So I'm here to put these girls in check. Hi guys, how are you tonight? Good. What can I get you guys to drink tonight? I just have a light beer. We have... <laughs> she doesn't know what she has. How are you gonna sell anything if you don't even know what you have? And a bad word spreads like wildfire. Go, and here is your arn. I almost called it an Arnie Palmer. Palmer. No, it's red. Arnold Palmer is lemonade and tea. It would be yellow and brown. I saw drama last night between all of them. I really know nothing about their skills. Kayla, pour me what you think is your ounce and a half. All right, let's see if we got it. Quarter ounce short. Keller. See, this is why I'm not a fan of free pouring. People say, oh, I can free pour. I don't need to jigger, blah, blah, I've been doing this for years. But the fact is most people don't jigger from the start. So like, well, how are you gonna measure cup, you know, flour if you never used a measuring cup? And once again, it, it, the liquor doesn't come out of a pour spout faster when you're free pouring than when you're using a jigger. So the speed isn't gonna be an issue. Pour an ounce and a half. Let's do it faster. Do you think that's an ounce and a half? I think it's a little short myself. Do it again. Still a little short. Where's the straw? Get the straw. Yeah. You see these bartenders? None of them are nailing the free pours. And I'm sure it's because they never jiggered before. So they don't even know what the correct amount visually looks like. I have a long way to go with these bartenders. Pour me an ounce and a half. Bigger on me. Let's see if I got an ounce and a half. That's nope. a quarter. Pour it again. Psst, nobody could pour. I mean, at least they're pouring under rather than over. So at least we know that they're not giving away alcohol. Talk to me about Ozzy. She's just my rock. She's sacrificed her life to help me. Are you considering marriage? Oh, yeah. So is this one of the things that's holding you back from that? One, yes, one. And I guess you don't want to get married when you're in the hole. Financially, no. right? Yeah, like... I understand that people want to help each other out, but having your, you know, a potential fiance, this place, if it fails, the potential marriage can fail too. This whole thing should have been separate from the start. Your personal life and your business should be separate. Stressed already, and there's nobody here yet. I'm feeling uh, nervous. I don't think we're ready for 300 people to come through here. Yeah, this place is huge. It's like a nightclub. And what we've seen earlier that they were super slow and doesn't sound like they were ever busy. One thing about getting venues this big is that you always have to be prepared to take these kind of crowds, even though the majority of your business is going to be slow. I'm interested on what game plan they have right now. And they know there's going to be 300 people coming in. What up, kids? What up, what up? Greyhound? Got it. I need three Captain Palmers and one Greyhound. 
So they're doing all verbal? They have a POS system. It should be printing tickets. You verbal everything, you know, drink orders are gonna get lost. Especially when it gets busy and loud. Bear with me, I gotta make 50 of them for the waitresses. There's a cup of ice, there's that. Why is she taking that out of the, the service station? Call out your orders if you have to ahead of time and write them down. I've already ran out of tea. Give me two seconds. They just opened. How did they run out of tea? You want me to get your drink? Yeah. Fix. Ready? Confidence. Happy. Smile, Jesse. Yeah. Bring a little energy. Also, I wouldn't recommend holding that many drinks with your hands. They're plastic, so just by crushing it, some of the drinks might spill out. Personally, I don't think that anybody should hold more than two drinks without a tray. So two drinks or more, in my opinion, you should use a tray. And if you're a fine dining restaurant, you should always use a tray, regardless of how many drinks you're gonna be running. I'll make a whole bunch of Greyhounds in just a moment. You didn't put enough Ciroc in there. Throw it out. Make her another one. It's taken me a half hour to get drinks out of the bar. They're not accurate. They're dumping liquor on the bar. They're a mess. Yeah, they're not, I mean, none of them passed the free pour test. So of course these drinks are not gonna have the correct wash line. And they should be able to see that they're under or over pouring these drinks just by visual. Do you understand what's going on here? Everything's awesome. How many drinks are they behind at the bar? None. No, they're what? What are you talking about? They're really behind. He thinks everything's good and everything's all caught up. Like he could see this. I've been trying to help everybody to kind of get a feel where everyone's at out here. Are you looking at your drinks to make sure they're right? Are you looking at the pouring? Are you backing your stamp up? You're not doing any of that. He's just a deer in headlights and in complete denial here. We're going down to West Sea Tango's now. It ain't worth it. it ain't worth it at all. Whiskey Tango's, here we go. Yeah. 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 Yeah, there's no flow of service. You're mixing the POS orders, you're verbaling everything. You could double make a lot of things on accident with this kind of system. They're not using jiggers. If you can't free pour, you should be using jiggers, all right? You might think it's faster, but if you're remaking a drink, it's gonna take twice as long to make it. So why not just get it right in the beginning? Thank you. It's so dead and boring in here. It's almost like the hypnotist was still here. Come on, guys. I know it doesn't help that the tables are so far away from each other. It makes it look even more dead, even though they're actually really busy. What about these? These are out? Now they're from 15 what minutes ago, but what are they? Taylor, are all these just trash? These tickets right Who's now? Who's are these? Like, okay. See, you gotta stab the tickets when they're done. The fact that they're mixing verbal with the tickets, there's a good chance that drinks are already made and there's a ticket there that the bartender thinks that they have to make, but it's already done. Like, there's so much confusion here. Like, once the drink is done, stab the ticket. How do we know if they're not? I mean, where's the check rack or anything? We don't even use those. Okay. Keep the tab going. You take they don't eat. So they just leave the tickets there when they already ran the drinks? Oh my god. I watched Jesse banging out drink after drink after drink, and he got better and better each time. Who's the worst in the building? Mark. He's not doing anything. I mean, the staff right now is not, is completely inexperienced, but at least they're trying. Like he's just walking around with his hands in his pockets, looking down on the floor, saying that nothing's wrong. The drinks are coming out as expected, but they're not. Like I said, you don't need training to help out. Just do simple things like busting the dirty glassware. It might seem like such a simple task, but it will help a lot. Circumstance, like, honestly. When I say to Elaine that you guys have worked here four years, what did you say to me? I thought they just started working yesterday. They've been here for four years? Are you kidding me? I also thought they were all new. Okay, okay so at this point, you should be able to free pour. It should only take about six months to be able to free pour accurately on a consistent basis. Four years and none of the bartenders can free pour properly. That's insane that's why we're here today that that was that, that was the best we were going to get through the, to this test i can't believe we weren't set up better our waitresses tabs the tickets they send back they don't tell us what they're ordering i know like i said they have a pos system and they're mixing it with the verbal system a huge no no there's going to be so much confusion what drinks are made what drinks need to be made there's no way you can tell especially when it gets hectic like this even though there might have been 300 people total they were already screwing up right from the start from this really really confusing system that they have so yeah i, I understand that most of them left before they even had a chance to get their drink it just says a drink they have to yell at me I spent 30 i spent the tickets don't say what drink they need. So the tickets just say drink. 
and it doesn't say vodka cran, doesn't say... Why would you set up the POS system this way? That's like sending food to the kitchen and it just says food. And then you have to go in the kitchen and say, hey, my ticket, that's a hamburger. There are way more problems than I originally thought there were. And every, I told every single one of you that this was going to be our printer. We made the floor chart. Every, every second I got, I'm getting pulled away. I was trying to be the glue on everything. I, I walked, I, I felt that I... No, you're the friggin... The managers have to set up the POS systems properly. I can now see why they're verbaling everything. Because the printers aren't saying what they're supposed to make. It just says drink. Now that creates even more confusion. Even if it's the same bartender or server that's saying that, okay, I need a vodka crayon and a screwdriver. But another ticket, the same server brings in two screwdrivers. So how do you know which ticket is meant for which drink if you're, everything is just being verbaled? And both tickets say two drinks and two drinks. So whenever you're managing the time, how do I know which is more urgent? The one that has the two screwdrivers or the one that has vodka crayon and a screwdriver on it? When I got here, I thought the staff drama was your biggest problem. Now I think it's you. Did management jump in tonight and take control and fix it? No. <laughs> nope. He could have been expediting the drinks because nobody knows what was going on. Their infrastructure here sucks. Yeah, the drama was just one of the things that's going wrong here. If the POS system isn't telling the bartenders what to make, why does it even print out any tickets? It's better that the servers just write down the drinks on a check the old school way and just putting it on the table. That older system would have been a far more effective system than what is going on over here. And nothing gets better. I want you to answer a question for me, quick, no thought. Who's the worst employee in the building? Mark is he even an employee? I mean, yeah, he's writing their paychecks, but he hasn't done anything. Why is this place failing? Because of me. So if you lose your house in three weeks, whose fault will it be? It'll be mine. Boy, is that what I wanted to hear. Yeah, that's the honest truth. I mean, as little experience as everyone else has, they can all move on to find another job. He can't blame it on them. I mean, he hasn't done anything. Like, and, and now he's starting to realize that. He hasn't given them proper training. He didn't set up the POS systems correctly. Yeah, the drama was pretty bad, but even that uh, situation, he didn't do anything about. But now you need to give him some tough love. It's do or die. Damn, one day left. Doesn't look like they've accomplished anything. Taylor, it's Mark. We are waiting on you. I'm just afraid if Taylor doesn't show up. Are you kidding me? There's one day left and one of the employees might call in. What happened with Taylor? Do we hear from her? I, I have not heard from her yet. No calls, no anything? You want to call her and fire her for me? Jeez, man, like, you might have one day of reconciliation between the server and the bartender over the drama. But yeah, that stuff might be temporary. After a while, they're going to realize that this whole thing is pretty messed up. Not just the drama, but, you know, the frustration of working that pressure test when the computer isn't doing what they're supposed to and the, and the owner's not doing anything. I mean, this place is just not set up for success. I can see the frustration on why she would not want to show up. Like, is this even salvageable at this point with only around a day left? Hey, Taylor, I can get to the cell, but when you hear the beep, you know what to do. Taylor, it's Mark. It's about two hours past the time you're supposed to be here. Two hours. Yeah, this is the right time to fire somebody. I have to let you know that, uh, we're no longer being in need of your services. I'm sorry, I have to let you go. Welcome to the bar biz, buddy. Like, was that really that much of a loss? People go to Whiskey Tango out of default. They're a country honky-tonk. They go for an older demo. I'm gonna create a country nightclub. I never had the cojones. Yeah, like you got to understand your competition. When I say competition, you're not really trying to like attack a neighboring bar and take all their customers. You got to recognize what kind of demographic that's untapped. They have their crowd. The sports bar concept doesn't seem to be working. So the other bar looks like they are targeting like the older country crowd. But this is a younger neighborhood and they're going to that bar just simply because they have no other options because this bar is not that great. Because even though that other bar isn't uh, meant for their demographic, at least they're accommodating to them. See how fast you can make these drinks. Watch that gold slogger, that was really heavy. Dump that out, that's definitely wrong. It's gonna be really, really sweet. Do it again. I'm waiting on your drinks. They'll be right out. All right. Oh. 
You had an old one in dump there. Dump it out, yeah, start, it out over. start over. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Ingredients like gold slugger, very, very powerful ingredients. So even if you are good at free pouring, powerful ingredients such as gold slugger, I would recommend measuring. Main reason is whenever you have sweetened liqueurs like gold slugger, actually does not come out as fast as unsweetened spirits because sugar has a higher viscosity, so the flow rate is not gonna be the same. Come on. Shake. So you know where you're at with time? We're at five minutes right now. Just you're good. You're good. Send them out. Five minutes on a mock service. First customer. Yeah, this is very, very tough staff to train, especially with less than a day left. Yeah, send them out. Are you serious? It took them more than twice as long as the, the goal on a mock service. Yeah, they have like a lot to work on. Training sucks. Let's go, guys. Move. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Watch that pour. That was a little heavy. Dump it. Do it again. Can't overpour gold trigger. Yep, you yep. need to pour a drink in that mixing cup? Hold on. Dump that mix. Clean that out. Come on. So he's supposedly the strongest bartender right now. And he's making the same mistake, overpouring the gold schlager. Very, very strong ingredient. You don't want to put too much of that. This is just mock service. There's no pressure from other guests like calling you out for drinks, trying to get your attention for drinks. Ugh, this is not good. Until your table is going to be another minute or so for your drinks. All right, I'm sorry about your wait on that. <laughs> We are gonna keep it deep. At least the server addressed the early by letting the guest know that it's gonna take later than expected. And being preemptive like that is actually very, very smart because it sets expectations. You know, if you know someone's drink's gonna take longer than usual, let them know. Just be like, hey, I'm sorry, the bartenders are backed up right now. And almost all the time they'll be accommodating. The guests will be okay with it. But if you're just like, oh my God, these drinks are taking forever. I'm just gonna go hide in the corner. Guess what? That means no tip for you. At that time, four minutes and 30 seconds is not like the other one was six minutes. It's only 90 second difference. So it's not that long of a difference that the guests would be that upset. We have a competitor that owns this market by default. I knew that the approach here was competitive intrusion. Go at them. Three. Oh, wow. Oh my God, that is such a huge improvement. Like the other one looked like a toy store. You couldn't even see the words sports bar and grill. That looks like a proper country bar. Youthfulness and country all in one word. We also lit the front of the building so it'll glow at night. Now the place really has a visual identity at night when you need it. Yeah, and only that, the previous sign, the bright colors drowned out the words that were really important which is that it was a bar. This one, you actually shine onto the building, like so you can actually see the building as well as the entrance. <laughs> yeah, this looks like a way better use of space. This place is pretty big and you know, the previous setup, all the tables were so far from one another, it just made it look like not intimate at all. Like this one is more like compacted, encourages like social interaction. <laughs> This looks so much classier. It's just gonna help us get get right where we need to be. The girls want to dance. Our dance floor was a joke. Now it's right here in the middle. It's like center stage. That's awesome. Yeah, that hip, that stage for that for the hypnotist was like it was on the corner where it's like, okay, is this just for these magic shows? Like, put the dance floor in the middle where everyone can see and it doesn't get in the way for the catwalk. Awesome. So what do you think? Woo I guess you like it. Yes. yes. Perfect. See that VIP area up there? Look at those beautiful cowhide chairs from Nebraska Furniture Mart. Yeah, that's where they were. Yeah, that upstairs area was originally blocked by the stage. So now that the stage or dance floor has been moved to the middle, now there's access to go upstairs and they can actually use that space to make money. Down here is all high seating. No backs on the bar stools. I want you to swing around and talk to people. We have a mirror ball with a saddle sitting on it. Does that say country nightclub or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty funny. The disco ball with the saddle. The buckle bunny. Peach tea. There you go, there you go. How was it? Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, the way that they arrange all the tables closer to one another, this now looks like super packed. What'd you think of it? Service is great. Um, drinks are delicious. There's about 180 people in here now. We're still... 180. 
and that looks way more packed than the pressure test which has 300 people so this is only at half capacity and it looks way more lit hang on, hang on. you may have to go to sidebar if you need something we're at seven minutes we have six tables up there with no drinks guys uh yeah, that's the thing, you can give these makeovers, but with only a few days to train, like you can only teach so much. Speed and efficiency, that's something that takes like experience, relevant experience. I'm gonna need more teas. Look at this, four deep. Four deep, that's amazing. They've never seen this before. They've never seen this before. Let's see how we're doing. Exactly. If I could only get drinks out of the bar quicker, I could call this a home run. How we doing guys? Yeah, it still looks like they're being overwhelmed. They do have, you know, some of them worked there for four years, but it wasn't a relevant experience. So yeah, they are lagging behind. Hey, if you enjoyed that, don't forget to check out these other videos as well. And please leave on the comment section on what videos I should react to next. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one.